Hi everyone, again I find myself at home preparing a sermon that I wish I could deliver in person but with a positive test once again I decided that it was definitely better to assume that I won't be able to make it to church this week. Whilst the symptoms seem to be quite mild I am incredibly tired and I found the simplest of tasks quite exhausting this last week and my brain has also not been functioning as it's at its usual capacity so I apologise if I a waffle too much or my train of thought goes off track. But first let us let us pray. Heavenly Father open our hearts and our minds. May we receive and hear your word through your Holy Spirit and be guided by what it is that you are saying to us. Amen. The gospel passage today is one of the hardest to figure out what's going on. So I'm going to break it down a bit in the hope it helps us understand. The first thing that struck me about this funny little interlude in the gospel was the Pharisees. Now, normally we associate the Pharisees with being the bad guys. If Jesus was Batman, the Pharisees would be the Joker. And I realise that's two weeks in a row that I've used either a DC or Marvel character. And so this seems to be at odds with what we know of the Pharisees. And whilst we, should tar, we shouldn't tar all of the Pharisees with the same brush, the majority of them were not keen to see Jesus reach his perceived goal. So why is there this apparent warning to Jesus? They say at that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. Well, I'm not entirely convinced that this is a warning about Herod. Later in Luke's Gospel, in chapter 23, verse 6 to, 6 to 12, we are told, When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time. Why then would the Pharisees warn Jesus against Herod Antipas, if indeed Herod was keen to meet Jesus, not kill him? Even when the Pharisees and scribes did bring Jesus before Herod, he couldn't make up his mind what to do with him, and so handed him back to Pilate. However, Herod had not long before beheaded John the Baptist, so there is a possibility that at that point he was vying for Jesus' blood. It could also have been that the Pharisees just wanted to get rid of him as quickly as possible, and using Herod as a, as a reason seemed plausible, given his proclivity to kill prophets. Either way, Jesus would not leave until he was ready to do so. Whatever or whoever was the reason behind this exchange, Jesus was having none of it and instead uses the situation to make it clear that the nature and purpose of his coming death is wrapped up with his mission and will not be decided by Herod, but instead by the will of God and God alone. He said to them, go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jesus is going to die. He makes that very, very clear, but Herod will not have her hand in it. We, we associate foxes with cunning and deceitfulness, but again, I'm not just not sure that it is what Jesus had in mind. I believe it's more to do with the capacity of the fox to disrupt, to tear apart a flock of sheep and murder them. Jesus is saying, I will die, but not because of that murderous fox. Jesus' death is the completion of what he is currently doing. And what he is currently doing is casting out demons and performing cures. Casting out demons and performing cures is part of Jesus' mission. As he fights demons, he is vanquishing the devil. And as he cures people, he is proclaiming release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. Yet today, tomorrow and the next day, Jesus makes it clear that his life, 
his ministry and his death are all one continuum. His death is not one is not different from the rest of his ministry, but it is a part of it. All of it, his life, his death, his ministry, are all about building the kingdom of God here on earth. As he says, I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. He acknowledges the recognition that he is a prophet and therefore if he is going to die anywhere and in order to fulfil scripture of course he must die in Jerusalem. Perhaps with some irony the place where his journey will take him the centre of the Jewish world Jerusalem. Jerusalem Jerusalem the city that kills the prophets and stone those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. In what appears to be a reflection or poetic response to his needing to go to Jerusalem, Jesus speaks to us this rather cryptic, almost mixed love ballad for Jerusalem. Recognising that it is the city that kills prophets, although somewhat ironically as it is also considered in the Old Testament and in Jewish cultures of the time to be the place of God's dwelling. Followed by his desire to gather the people of Jerusalem under his wings. (coughs) followed by an announcement of punishment before returning to acknowledge that Jerusalem will recognise him on his entry on Palm Sunday. Jesus colourfully paints a picture of a city that has so much promise, a city that he loves very much, and yet it cannot see the truth that lies in front of it. So what does this all mean for us? How can we apply it to Lent? Last week I asked us to consider allowing ourselves to be tested, allowing ourselves to be transformed throughout this Lent. And as we head (coughs) towards the cross at Easter, we must ask ourselves if we are leading lives that lead others to that cross as well. Let's begin with Jesus. Everything that Jesus was and everything he did was to establish the kingdom of God. As Jesus is our template, We too should in all our doing and our being be aiming to establish the kingdom here on earth. Do we allow the threat of earthly rulers stand in our way as we seek to establish the kingdom in this place? Is there a fox that would come and destroy given the chance? And do we let that stop us from reaching our goal? Or would we push forward, pressing into God and his promise? Would we recognise a prophetic word from Jesus or would we dismiss it? How do we recognise, hear and see God's will for us in this place? How do we stop ourselves from becoming Jerusalem, the city with so much hope and potential that didn't recognise the Messiah? And so we pray. Heavenly Father, may we always seek your kingdom in our parishes. May we always be listening and watching for your prophetic words to us. Gather us under your wings, guide us and keep us safe from the destruction of evil forces. Help us to be Christ to those we meet and a light to all. Amen.